Good evening, artists. Good evening, Robert. <laughs> Can you hear me? This sounds good, right? Good. My name is Robert Mealy. I'm a multimedia artist. I work in photography and sculpture and painting, and I make installations and messes. Um, uh, and I'm just going to go right into the work because there's lots to show you. Please interrupt any time if you have any questions or comments. I'll also be taking some questions afterwards. Um, this is a painting that I made in School of Visual Arts undergrad, probably in 1988. I graduated in 1990, but I, f I feel like this was kind of a, an, a very important piece for me and finished and um, I was very, very satisfied with it. Um, this is called Triptych. Um, it's a two-paneled uh, acrylic on canvas. And you see that some of the canvas is um, exposed. And I'm showing you this because it's, it's amazing that, you know, whatever, how many years, 100 years ago that was, um, that there are still some elements that I'm completely working with since 1988. Um, I was really pleased with this. I wanted to create some kind of, um, you know, stripes and complementary colors. There's this energy that I really, really respect. And I was definitely trying to capture that. This was also very labor intensive. These stripes were automatic. And then I would paint on top of that again and again to get it very, very vivid and and uh, rich color or, or hue. And the problem with this was for me, it took forever. It took, you know, a very long time, almost, you know, more than half the semester to finish. Um, and it was also, I just felt like geometric abstraction, I, I don't know, there, I felt like I had more to say. And from this piece, I was questioning what I wanted to say. And I wanted to address some kind of psychological, like I said, neuroses, some kind of like static energy, some like this almost positive negative, this I wasn't really sure, but I w it definitely wasn't about geometry and just abstraction. And I figured it was kind of, where does all this energy really brew from? And I figured the home. So I started, making um, household object kind of sculpture paintings. You'll see throughout my career, I've been um, experimenting with painting and sculpture. There's always this conversation happening. Um, what happened with this piece, again, it's, th it's, it's very formal, but it's not on canvas. Um, it, it consists of, of more than one piece, like the last piece I just showed you. Um, this these striped pieces from the past, I felt like, almost looked like I poured them. So I started pouring the paint and that was really a, an amazing um, breakthrough for me because um, not only does it have this, um, you know, very romantic kind of marbleizing uh, feel to it, but I prefer the combination of that and plastic and, and almost looks like a, a a uh, household uh, countertop for mica of some sort. So there's this decorative, romantic, plastic thing that will continue throughout today, since I was working in my studio today. Um, so I was happy with that comp composition. This is also another refrigerator door that I did. And this refrigerator door was done, the, the rest of the pieces were done with high gloss enamel poured. And this was poured with a very dry, fluorescent paint. And the fluorescent paint dries very, very flat. And it needed some kind of protection. And I just felt guilty about placing or painting polyurethane on top to give it a high gloss and protect it from dust as well. Um, so I had a plastic slip covered. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, I, and this plastic slip covering just like was a, another perfect element for like this this kind of weird nostalgic objects and, um, uh, and you know, kind of suburbia and the home and decorative um, 
So that was a really good turning point. Here's another small refrigerator door or stove door, I believe. This, this is a few of them connected, put together. I then started the whole idea of this a plastic upholstery and slip cover. I just, you know, to begin with, I think it's just so ridiculous and I'm not sure I understand it and why people do it. It's who wants to sit on that? Not I. <laughs> um, but it, you know, it's, it's really this, you know, I feel like it's a very specific kind of culture that does this. Um, middle lower class, which is what I'm from. So I'm, I'm representing, <laughs> and, um, but I am doing it and, you know, really pushing it to the fullest and most ridiculous way. So I kind of, throughout the evening I'll be saying that I marbleize it, but it's a, a combination of like, you know, Linda Bangless and, and Jackson Pollock and, and romantic marbleizers from the 1900s um, in Italy. <laughs> um, but so I started pouring the paint on the furniture. This, this box is a uh, refrigerator door as well. It was a really beautiful one from probably the late 60s with no handle. Kind of looked like a tombstone as well. But the, now the plastic is turning yellow. I, I, I chose a, a, a yellow plastic to give it just another nostalgic um, nicotine stained like reference. So this chair is now kind of, now it's uh, a folding chair that's been painted and it's dysfunctional. It's almost like an encasement for it. Um, this is artwork attached to a painted chair. I was in a group show with this piece um, and that gallery that I showed at had this amazing project room and the project room was about 20 by 20, and the ceilings were under eight foot, so it was very claustrophobic, which I loved. So uh, when I had that group show, I asked if I could do something in the back room in the project space, and they were like, yes, do whatever you want. So that was my, f I made baloneyism. <laughs> and so this was my first installation, and this is probably, um, this is six years after graduation undergrad. Um, Baloneyism uh, was in this space, you know, it had this very claustrophobic feel to it. I lined the ceilings with garbage bags. It's the first time I, I paneled a space. This paneling that I grew up with, my generation grew up with, just ugh, eek. I, um, um, it's very effective, it, you know, it really kind of plays with your senses. Um, so what I wanted to do is kind of use, there's a, a a just kind of a crappy sofa, and on top of the sofa, the artwork matches, but the artwork is a refrigerator door. They're both slip covered. The hanging chair um, is also dysfunctional because the slip cover goes over the, the top of it, the opening of it. Um, there's a shag carpet that has 20 gallons of paint, um, and there's just this ridiculous molding. So it's when you walked into the space, it was like it was uncomfortable, but it was shiny. So there's this weird contrast of like, you know, kind of seductive, but like, get me out of here, <laughs> which is something I, I like. <laughs> um, here's another view. Again, this molding had no rhyme or reason. I just wanted to pick really strange colors. Um, I made my first photo piece for Baloneyism, and I've, I started taking photos in high school, and the, and the photo shoots were always really kind of dress up and ridiculous kind of um, performances, quote unquote. Um, kind of very ridiculous behavior, over the top, costumes and makeup. Um, and I wasn't really sure what to do after baloneyism. I was just like, I don't want to continue working with the, these objects because they're not going to get better than baloneyism. <laughs> this is, you know, this is pretty good stuff. And I just want to continue as well as you all should, is just continue to challenge your, yourself. So I, I was like, what am I going to do after this? And I decided 
I was really happy with this very generic family photo album that was also slip covered. It's just one singular image of me repeated again and again in a matte board. Um, and it's overexposed and underexposed. So it had this really nice painterly quality to it. Um, I was really happy with that and I was just like, all right, I'm gonna work with this snapshot idea. So snapshots and home movies is something that I really just focused on for about two years. And I will show you a few samples. So these short films and videos are, um, you know, they really are home movies. No quotes necessary. <laughs> That's my mother and it's, um, they're friends and I, what, when I was shooting them, you know, again, back to like that nicotine stained chair with the plastic, the yellow tinged plastic. There's something about this nostalgic in the past that I like to dig up. <laughs> and um, so the, the films are very raw. Um, they're basically caricatures. They're situations that I came up with. Um, the, the videos of my mother, here's another one. They're um, caricatures of her. You know, I, I was able to do the hair and the makeup, and for all of them, I do the hair and makeup, everything. But they're, you'll see that they're, you'll notice they're very short, and that was important to me. I wanted them to be like under three minutes, which is usually the time for a um, Super 8 film.
So these are my home movies. Um, when I was working on these, here's some more samples, um, examples. Some of my mom, most are friends. Um, when I was putting these together and really focusing on just producing these for two years, I mean, I'm still working on them, but I, it, it was the only thing I was doing. I wasn't producing anything in the studio in solitude. Um, but again, there are these kind of <coughs> familiar situations like you saw a woman and her dog, or my mother and a dog, or just someone hanging out with their ribs. Um, but when I was shooting these, I, I never really thought of, of you know, myself as, as a video artist or a photographer. I really wanted to just use these as an element to sculpture, uh, just like I would use color or negative space. Um, I wanted to use these, I just started collecting all these images that I was taking. So this was one of the first pieces that I did. Um, this is called, I was in a group show at, I think, uh, at PS1. Uh, Kenny Schachter put together in the early 90s and it was called Binge. So I was, I thought it was an appropriate piece. It's this, uh, I think it's like 50 bottles and they're all uh, this kind of poured paint and on top of each uh, bottle, instead of the ingredients, it was more like a result. Then I did a, a white room at uh, white columns and I and now I had a really good collection of photos so I did again these very common kind of um, family photo albums but I was trying to push it a little and do things that are not so celebrated like smoking these are also plastic slip covered uh, this was another self-portrait but this was eight foot this is very large um, and this one was one night stand this is also eight foot. Now I started using, um, I was thinking about that installation baloneyism again. So it's kind of a fragment from, from that with photos and slip covered. But this is what I was really thinking about when I was producing the photos and the, the videos is making these kind of very um, again, like the family photo albums, I wanted to make just common ob household objects, but really screw around with it um, and make it mine. So I made my units. Th this was the very first unit that I made. Um, and it's just an entertainment unit. It was one video, silent, with a few photos, the paneling, a little paint. This is the, another one. So it was around this time, um, I thought like, all right, I'm definitely going the right direction. I have a, 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 a large inventory of photos and videos and I need to get back to the studio and be alone and away from my mother <laughs> and away from my friends and boyfriends and, and editors and, um, and me just videoing everything. It was the 90s, baby. <laughs> it was just like, I was just like shooting and filming everything. Um, so what I did was I was thinking about what am I going to do in the studio. I don't want to paint on appliances again, but I want to kind of bring all the things that I was thinking about more or less with the videos. So they're kind of like these, you know, trashy home movies. Um, uh, they're, uh, a there's a lot of obsessive behavior in them, uh, people doing obsessive things. And there is um, this kind of superficial almost gloss barrier of like ridiculous over-the-top campy makeup and costume. So that all equals bottle cap paintings. <laughs> so that's what these are. I, it was a really nice, nice moment to like just kind of bring it all together. Um, I started making these in 96 and um, I'm still making them now, so I, I, I feel like I'm, I'm definitely a painter, you know, I, 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 everything kind of has some paint on it, even if it's a human. Um, so these are beer bottle caps nailed into uh, three quarter inch plywood, cup up, and then really encased and drowned and drenched in plaster. So they're really full of plaster and there's just this very slight suggestion 
and, um, and that's what really makes them, they're, they're complicated like Boloniaism, that installation was. They're, they're really beautiful, but then they're really like a bottle cap art. <laughs> and, you know, I, mm, yeah, uncomfortable. Um, again, and here's just a bunch of examples. Throughout the years, these were, like I said, I just finished one like two days ago. I'm still working on these, still challenged by them. That one's 10 foot. There is a close up. You can see how the light really captures This is with a, a bed, headboard. This one's in drag. This I was thinking uh, like a bottle cap unit, which it's very sculptural. So, you know, after like really kind of figuring this out and having those two units put together, um, I felt like for the very first time, I felt like it was time to have a one-person show and to find some representation. And I wouldn't mind talking to you guys about that for a second. It's um, very important to, um, my peers were having shows, solo shows, kind of around the world, right outside of school, right out of undergrad. And I just never, I just wanted to really make sure I had some really strong ideas and um, made some mistakes and um, a body of work before I had brought or invited any professionals over. And by professionals, I think it's always good to have, keep in touch with all your peers in this room for the rest of your life and, and continue to have studio visits with each other. And, um, but when it, when it comes down to having you know, some representation, just make sure you have your, your, your work together. And I really felt like I basically had two bodies of work. So I was just like, I had to start showing it because <laughs> it was kind of, it was a little too much work. Um, so I had my first studio visit with, uh, with Andrew Kreps and, and at 20 minutes later, he was just like, let's do this. And it was very exciting. Um, and we were both like, what do we show? I wasn't sure what to show. And I was in some group shows like The White Room with um, the, the family photo albums. And some films were in here and there and some group shows. So people were really expecting um, some kind of video or photography show of some sort. And no one had seen any of the bottle cap paintings before. So Andrew and I decided to really just mix things up and have a basically a, you know, a formal show with these bottle cap paintings. So I, I made about five or six of them. And then I made my first um, curtain pieces. There they are again, stripes um, and a household object. So these are my painted curtain striped paintings. This is the first set that I did. And uh, these are 10 foot, very traditional materials of canvas dipped in plaster. Again, it's back to that stripe painting in 1988. Now it's probably 97. Um, so I had that show in 98 and it was very quiet and people literally walked into the show and they were like, thought you were having a show. Whose work is this? <laughs> um, which I liked. I liked that, I, you know, that element of surprise. I like to continue to do that. Um, and so yeah, that was, that was, it's, it's interesting because you're going to see different versions of this work. I'm still making these, you know, the curtain pieces have kind of, you'll see that they gradually turn into like more traditional romantic drape pieces. And um, the bottle cap paintings are just really have a life of their own. They're just continuing to develop and grow. So the second show that I had with Andrew Krebs was Robert Mealy's unit. And this is the invite. Um, and this was, a, I think this was really kind of a turning point for me. I felt like I'd been working on this show for a, a decade, you know, really. I think I had some images, let's see. There were like at least photographs from high school in this, in this um, piece. So the, the show was, Robert Milley's unit was just one piece of sculpture and it was 16 foot by 10 foot. And there were 13 monitors, 
and about 22, 23 videos. And the videos are, um, you saw one of them. Uh, again, this is another very common household object that I built and painted. Again, it's a little bit more ridiculous with the molding and the painting and the composition. Um, but this was the first time that I really uh, showed these, you know? So uh, people were just kind of flipping out about the imagery with my mother and they couldn't figure it out. And so I was just like, I decided that for my next solo show, I was just going to really go there. And, and so my next show was called You, Me, and Her, titled You, Me, and Her. There is mom. <laughs> yep, that was the invite. Um, when you got into the exhibition, uh, you first saw my mom in a cage. She was in a, in a glass box, drinking and smoking, in character of one of the videos that was being shown um, in the back of the gallery. The gallery was, I, I, I divided the gallery into three separate galleries, and the first one was very formal. And so this was all basically black, white, and yellow work. And it was just kind of playing around with my different practices. This was something that I really haven't done much of, but this is um, Joseph, Albers, um, uh, Joseph Albers homage to a square done in noodle. And that one is um, a cube, my homage to minimalism, which is very ridiculous. There's my Donald Judd um, unit. Here's a bottle cap painting. There's the, um, the cube. Then when you entered, uh, there is a, uh, a small view viewing room with the one video of my mother that she was in character, and that was um, Popcorn Mommy. And then, Here are the works that were in that section. This is from a video, Facelift Mommy. And then you went into the back room, and I, if this was a, kind of a continuation of baloneyism. Um, I paneled the floor, ceilings, and walls. I did a wall of curtains. And then across from the curtain was a unit. And this was uh, called uh, her unit. This unit, uh, this, the installation, the bottom video here, you know, I marbleized my mom to, you know, of course, to match the interior. Um, the top video was the one that you saw, Penthouse Mommy. I was very pleased with this installation, but it had this weird, calming, I th and I, I just, I mean, it was very intense and claustrophobic, but still at the same time calm for some, it, I think it's because there was such a limited palette. It was just, you know, green, blue, and white. Um, I wasn't sure why that happened, but, so these are images that were inside of that unit. Mommy drowning. <laughs> So the next thing I, I, I came up, we, we decided to do a proposal for statements in Switzerland. And does everyone know what that is? It's um, statements, you know, the, the Basel Art Fair started, you know, their, its offspring is in Miami, but the original is in Basel, Switzerland. And there is a, uh, almost like a competition where you, send in a proposal, and if you're accepted, they accept about 15 people per uh, fair. And we gave a proposal, and we were accepted, and we were very excited. So we gave a proposal with the last installation, that whole mommy installation that I just showed you. Um, 
But this is what I really wanted to do. I really wanted to push it. So this was a full palette and like the, the darker wood made it much more just weird and strange. I really did some fine tuning on the curtains. I love these curtains. Um, so that was the booth, <laughs> which was pretty nuts. Um, that ended up going to uh, the Milwaukee Art Museum and then um, Greater New York 2005. So far, um, it's funny you should ask because the next image is the first time I used, I'll tell you. Okay. This is the, f uh, so all those in the past, I've never used any, any sound at all. I wanted them to be very much about um, home movies and not about audio. I eventually added sound to them for this piece. This was a piece that I did for the, um, the new museum, like 2004 or five. Um, and they wanted a unit, and I was getting a little tired of making them so much like household furniture. So what I did was I just really kind of pushed that. And this is me doing minimalism, <laughs> which is funny. Um, so I kind of stripped it of all color. And um, this time, instead of using, well, just making it into one piece of furniture, I found furniture in the garbage, and I just kind of united it all together with white paint. And now, you kind of had to walk all around this, this unit. And uh, this time it had music. And the music, they, they were just all blasting at the same time. So, to answer your question. It was loud, it was good. So after, you know, th so I stripped it of all color and I was, and I felt really, really good about that. Um, and now, after showing the, the videos and the photos for a good uh, solid five years all over the place, um, I was like, what am I going to do next? I don't want to repeat myself. So I was thinking about what am I doing? I'm working with the figure a lot. I'm working with the figure with photography and film. And I, and I feel like these are, you know, these were performances and I've never done figurative sculpture. So um, in 2005, I had an exhibition at the gallery and it was in between false comforts. And again, I wanted to have this element of like almost this nostalgic feeling to it. Um, so I wanted it to look like a black and white photograph. And it did, didn't it? <laughs> um, but more importantly, um, I removed all video and photography and my mother and boyfriends and no one was invited. <laughs> um, so this time I made my first figurative sculpture. And I felt like the fig so you'll see that these, these curtain pieces were very similar to the ones that were just shown um, at the, the fair and then at Milwaukee and Greater, Greater New York but they're just done in black and white. I always kind of play with this architecture one way or another. So I did the floor and um, these figures kind of came out of the idea of, I wanted to just like put one of my curtain pieces, just like you're having a bad day and you want to put your blankets over your head and not really deal. That was my original intentions, but I couldn't figure out the material because it was with plaster and the plaster just kept on freezing and hardening and, and I wanted it to be a really smooth curtain piece over a figure, like that over a figure with just a silhouette of a figure. Couldn't do it. Um, and so I just, let, I just let it happen organically. So it was really kind of a nice thing, an accident. You know, we have accidents in the studio, but it's our job as artists to edit, you know, because not all accidents are happy accidents <laughs> and they shouldn't be shown. But we definitely learn and grow from them. Um, 
So I was, yeah, so that was that show. First time I made the figures, they were all black and white. Again, pouring of the paint. And then the next, you know, obvious step for me was to uh, make them in color. So now I started working with some color. And then um, a private collector came in and asked if I wanted to work in bronze. And I said, yes. <laughs> so uh, like, in like just in weeks after that conversation, they th flew me to Lisbon and, and I produced these monsters in two weeks. Um, and this was really an exciting project. They ended up being um, four, in addition of four, so there are 16 bronze pieces. And here's, here's some of the process of that. Um, it was, you know, th this was so fresh to me, still making these pieces, that um, I didn't even realize how cool this image was until way after the fact I got home. Um, I was just in this trance of like getting the work done and, but I, you know, all these figurative sculptures have all this stuff going, all these guts going on underneath it, and it's just to make the silhouette of this figure a, a suggestion of a figure. Um, so you'll see eventually I start even working with the guts, we'll call that. This is me being a very traditional sculptor. Just I wanted to show you the scale. This one, I just love this. I think if I made, I, I would have just stopped there now, but this was 2008 or 2007. So this was the final product. Um, like I said, there was four of them and in addition of four. And they were shown all over the place. They were, this is at Freeze. And then they were shown at City Hall Park. I think that's in um, Portugal somewhere. It's just inter it's interesting for me to see them in these different environments. It was nice to see them at the park because it, they were there for six months, so it was like through a few seasons. They really changed. So I was asked to do a, a talent, uh, well, I, I wanted to put together a, um, a uh, curate an evening of performance uh, because a lot of the people in, in, in my videos are, are great dancers, Merce Cunningham dancers and what. Um, and I just wanted to showcase some talent and I ended up having a talent show, a talent show, it really wasn't a talent show, it was an evening of talent at the uh, kitchen. And this is the stage that I designed for it. And I think there were about nine acts. And the acts were um, eight or nine minutes. Each artist had nine minutes to do whatever they wanted um, on my stage. I made this really kind of ridiculous, over the top, like quasi glamorous backdrop curtain for the stage. And that was really, that was, I learned a lot from that and I, I'm still working with this kind of material and you'll see some coming up. Stay tuned. <laughs> so I opened that, the talent show that evening. It was two nights and I, I, I marbleized my mother on stage each night. There's the whole group. It's fun. So, those are, here's one of the sculptures, one of the first sculptures I made after the, the stage. It was hanging above the office at the gallery. I really like this piece. Then I was asked to do a show in the Lower East Side, and this is like a staircase going down, and this banister. It's all this, this Christmas decoration and this uh, holiday decoration, and you know, growing up we had 
my house looked like this, basically. My mom went a little nuts with the Christmas decorations, and that's kind of what this was referencing. <laughs> these are monsters. These are like 15 foot. These were in Prague. So the next show was Unshameless Fullness Leslie at the gallery. And again, I always kind of play with some form of architecture. And when you first entered the gallery, there was the office, boom, right there. And I thought, it, there's nothing great about a drop ceiling, right? Um, so I added one. I added a drop ceiling to the office, but I, you know, turned it into baloneyism. It's like this contrast between ugh and wow. <laughs> and then when you enter the gallery, this was, I felt like this was kind of the first time to really have a, you know, just have the sculpture have a life of its own and not get so caught up in an installation and, and really need other components. So these pieces were just all doing their thing in solitude. I was feeling, you know, I was really feeling compliment, these complementary colors, blue and orange. So a lot of the work had to do with that. I started working with um, objects with the figures, objects with the bottle cap paintings. Very traditional bust and drape, just busted. <laughs> this was another show at David Kordansky, which was, I think, the same year or so. It was basically a continuation. But this time you'll see that the figures, um, this is how I, it's funny, it's like it took about five or six years to get to the place where I really originally thought they would be. Um, so now I started working with a new material as opposed to plaster I started working with fiberglass and this really gave me a lot more Gave the material a lot more life for me to manipulate it and set it the way I wanted and Now some of the body parts are sticking out which I like which really makes it much more strange and See, I started these in 97, these, these curtain pieces, and now this was probably 2010. They just kind of are growing and developing. And This was my second talent show. I did another, like I think there was five years in between each show. Um, this time I, I really kind of played with theater and um, Choreography and dance. I kind of did it all for this for my segment. I hired this this piece was called um, the first time I met Robert Mealy and I hired these three actors who I'd never met before and they had to give a monologue throughout the whole 10 minutes um, and they I didn't, I didn't give them any information about me, but their monologue had to begin with the first time I met Robert Mealy so they're yelling at the audience and then I had these professional dancers in the background with this very classical choreography that I put together. Eh, it was okay. <laughs> but it was um, still a challenge. There's me dancing. I was like, I can dance. <laughs> uh, it was great. It's on my website. Check it out. That was the set that year. Then my, my, my next show, and I guess my last show in 2011, was Triscuit Opsification. And that was at Andrew Kreps. And for this, I returned to video because I feel like I didn't make any videos for almost um, 10 years, almost 10 years, about nine years, nine or 10 years. And, um, it's really, I just like to bring things back and let things rest and, 
you know, they'll never be the same. It's, it's, they have a new life to them, a new energy. It's great. So I made 11 new videos for this show. And this was the entrance of the, of the exhibition. And there were three monitors with three new videos. And then when you entered the space, you entered uh, kind of a, a version of the house that I grew up in. So we, I painted it this ugly American beige, and I made, I, we carpeted the gallery, and that little weird, this strange door was this closet door in my house that always freaked me out. And that's how you had to enter and exit the gallery. Um, these are the, the pieces that were in the show. This, the new figure is, um, again, with some body parts exposed. This figure is on top of a um, grandfather clock that I attacked with a saw. <laughs> the appliances are back. I haven't worked with an appliance in, you know, a decade in and a half, and it was really a kind of exciting to bring it all together again. I'd like to show you maybe a, um, <laughs> I'll show you a video from that exhibition. So now there's sound to them. Um, I think I, I made sound for that one unit um, for the new museum. And uh, then I put the website together about a year ago, and a lot of them didn't have sound. And it was so much fun kind of like reworking them and putting sound to them um, that I'm hooked. Like, yeah, sounds cool. <laughs> sound wasn't cool, but now it is. Um, I, I just finished another unit. Again, what I do with these videos and the photographs, I will definitely reuse them like I use the color orange. They're, they're used again and again. So I think in the, this was in a video in one of the units, and that did not um, have any, they, they usually don't have any sound when they're in the units. 
This was this was a, a new video as well.
So the rest of the exhibition were these draped curtain pieces with um, appliances. There were units. This, this was, this was blondes down. This unit was called um, Rite of Spring Mattress. <laughs> <laughs> and it's about, you know, the Rite of Spring, Stravinsky's masterpiece. Um, but mine had to do with um, those things. It's, it's, the seasons are changing in this video. And then there is this air mattress, this air mattress um, with these guys floating around. Uh, you'll have to see it to believe it. <laughs> Oops. Here are some stills from that unit. And so, you know, when you entered the exhibition, there was this giant stair. You, were, you weren't sure what you were entering. It was dark and creepy with these really dark, sinister um, three videos. And then you turn the corner, and I really wanted this staircase to kind of look two-dimensional, just very flat with this marbleized staircase that really this was dysfunctional, didn't go anywhere. Um, one of the sculptures, the sculptures that you saw that done with these materials um, came to life. <laughs> and it was featured in one of the video, uh, one of this other unit, this unit that was across from the stairs. So the stairs really functioned almost as stadium seating to watch the videos. Splashing was on the top. And um, this guy, there was a video of this guy. Um, in that unit as well. These are stills from the other videos in that exhibition. And that's it. Right now what I'm working on is a, um, you know, I put, I put this mommy work that took about a decade to produce. It, it hasn't really been shown for about 10 years now. So um, I, I'm in the process of putting a book together, which is really kind of exciting. Um, and I'm just kind of working on my next exhibition, which probably won't be until like a year from now at Kreps. But you have any questions? She was, the, the photo shoots really, um, I obviously have an, you know, an interesting mother and she was difficult when I was a child growing up. Um, and when, during my teen years, we really didn't speak much at all. So um, when I was in SVA, I made a, uh, an installation, my first installation, it was a storefront on 17th Street at the Sculpture Studio. And um, again, I was working with all these household objects. I like made this giant sculpture out of um, just coffee pots. <laughs> um, and for this uh, installation, I took a video class and I just took, I, I, again, I was just working with the household objects and then I was just like, what is the household object? <laughs> I was like, the mother. So it's kind of like I started working with her and um, our first photo shoot or two was very quick and easy and then we, um, I went to visit her. And when I visited her, we started drinking, and I, and I brought all this makeup and these costumes. And she thought, we were taking the photos, and she was just like, this is boring. I'm going to take my clothes off. And she just took her clothes off, and that's never happened before. Like, we, she wasn't running around the house nude when I was a kid. But she was very provocative. These are caricatures of my mother. Um, they are, you know... She's provocative. She drinks too much. She, um, you know, I remember as a kid, she would go to the beauty parlor with like red hair 
and come home with like a white afro, like a white perm, <laughs> round and big. And I was like, ah! <laughs> I remember that specifically, it was the 70s. And mini skirts and go-go boots and um, coming and going. And um, so I had a lot of anger and um, resentment and I wasn't into her. But we started having these photo shoots and we would drink and talk and like she would just blab, blah, 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 blah. And, um, and I got all this information that I didn't know about my mother and I was, um, it became these therapy sessions. So um, I feel like that she um, needed to, um, she was asking for forgiveness for her behavior when I was a child and she would really basic, she will do anything. Um, but knowing that, for you it's a little shocking and stuff, but anyone who knows my mother is just like, uh-huh. <laughs> when they see, my brother video, my brother does the editing. He's like, we don't ever even talk, like, he, like never, ever, like, it's like, uh-huh. Let's just go to the next still and like, you're like, it's not an issue. People who look at it, they're like, yeah, that's your mom. Um, but it's the truth. I mean, so I, I took these because I could. You know, it was, it was really easy. But to answer your question about collaborating, it, mm -mm, it wasn't about collaborating. It was like she was very generous. You know, she, was, she would really kind of do anything. But she would, um, we never brainstormed or sat around. It was like either she would visit or I would visit and we'd drink and we'd take her clothes off and put makeup on <laughs> and, 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 and she would be like, oh, what are we doing? <laughs> All right. Um, you know, for the performances, it was so much not a collaboration that I couldn't let, I wouldn't let her know um, when, when we did the, I did a performance at Judson Church and I did a performance at uh, the kitchen, which you saw when I marbleized her. The whole thing was ready. It's, the, the show was opening at eight o'clock and she had no idea about it. And she was coming in from New Jersey and I was like, I hope she doesn't cancel. <laughs> And I met her at Penn Station and we went straight to a bar and we had a few drinks and now it's like 6.30, 7 o'clock and I'm like, oh, I want to show you something. And I brought her to the kitchen <laughs> and, and I was like, look at the stage, isn't it great? She's like, oh my God, it's fabulous. And I was like, come back here. And, and everyone was like running around naked and, and, and they're getting into their costume and rehearsing and warming up for their performances. And she's like, what's going on? And I was like, oh my God, oh, by the way, just, just the, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put you on a chair and um, she's like, what? <laughs> and I was like, oh, let me just pour some paint on you. And she's like, okay. <laughs> and there was, so she had like an hour to like accept and, 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 and she did. And the first night we did it, we, we just, I just threw in the chair and I poured paint on her and I cleaned her up. And then I walked her off stage and then I brought her into the back so she could dress and clean herself up some more. Um, the, after that, the second time, she was just like, uh-uh. She was like, I want to watch the rest of the performance. So we just walked from the stage and we just sat down and she, and she was entertained. <laughs> so she's, you know, she likes the attention. Um, I think she likes what's happened between us, how we kind of bonded and um, become closer. But it's never been this, um, like, like I said, brainstorming or like this plotting. I mean, of course I have these ideas, these very kind of simple ideas um, when we get together, kind of for all the photo shoots with her and with these guys. Um, and then the, I, I don't, you know, I, I like to take all the work, um, make it very like organic and have a life of its own and not be too anal and anal retentive and too focused and you know, there's a beauty to that. There's, you know, there's chance and risk taking and, and often I had an idea, a very loose, simple idea, and then something great came out of it, out of nowhere. So that's what would happen. So she, if, to answer your question, <laughs> well, it wasn't really about collaborating as much as her being very generous. Hmm. <laughs> Um, uh, well, what happens is I usually have a very loose idea and then I shoot it and I overshoot it and then I shoot it again and some more 
And so I have a lot of footage and filters and slow motion and fast motion is the magic of the editing room. And, you know, each piece, each video has a life of its own and some are just, it's just um, basically untouched footage and others are very manipulated. So they really don't have a very, s nothing is that specific with a um, strict policy. Yeah, I'm not afraid to, um, what usually happens is it just, it just has been happening very um, naturally. Um, you know, for example, when I f started making these sculptures, these figurative sculptures, it didn't work. Right? I, I think I mentioned that. I wanted them to be like the later sculptures with a very clean drape on top of them, but they were a mess, and I just, you know, I allowed that to happen. I also mentioned earlier that um, I've definitely made mistakes, and I, you know, you edit. <laughs> you don't show, no matter, even if it's taken a year to produce, and, you know, a lot of money, that doesn't make it a great piece. <laughs> So, you know, I make mistakes, but somehow it's all been kind of like very um, natural. It's just been this natural process. I, you know, beat myself up and like I think, you know, you know, I really just want to challenge myself. And once there's an idea, we get it done. So it's really a lot of trial and error in the studio. Um, but, but what's happening is it's, it's usually the same materials. You know, it's like it's wood and plaster and enamel. And there's lots of that, and it's just done in different ways, you know. But it's just, you know, trial and error, mostly. Th the work is really this kind of path, you know. It's, it's not based on theory. It's, you know, it's... it's um, psychological it's it's my shit and it's your shit and it's like it there's this yeah there's this controlled part of me and very disciplined and responsible and then there's the other side of me <laughs> and that's what you get you know I mean yeah they're all over the place um, there were 16 total and uh, we, ugh, I was a rock star. It's like, they just put me up and they're like, do whatever you want. And I stayed in the Four Seasons for like six weeks and um, a car and driver and it was awesome. <laughs> and it was, the thing, it was really, really good timing. I was so lucky because, you know, it, it happened in 2007. And if it happened in 2008, it wouldn't have happened. There's no way. Um, but these guys just had a lot of money and they were starting a foundation um, of fabricating and, and, and uh, supplying all the finance. And then, so th I think they got, out of the four sets, I think they got one and a half sets for, for so we have another set. They're for sale, you want, interested? <laughs> <laughs> no one has bought them. Trade so, for one. Yeah. We'll trade for one. Okay, I'll, I'll take a Mercedes. <laughs> <laughs> It's like a car. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's there there are some in um they're in Rome and Portugal and there's some in Mi there's one in Miami. There's there's two or three at Art Omai upstate. Do you know do you guys know Art Omai? It's an international sculptural park residency O M I. Write it down. <laughs> um and they have a great sculpture garden and park and and I think you can do a res there's a, international residency there, but it's a beautiful trip. It's in Hudson, right outside of Hudson, New York. So it's about two and a half hours north of here. I and there's still, there's still, uh, I think there's two or three there, but I don't know. There's some in storage. Oh, I bounce. I bounce. Yeah. I, you know, um, like what did I do today in the studio? I am working on a book, so I worked on that for a little bit. 
and I set up some studio visits, and I'm um, proposing some outdoor sculptures, and I painted some circles, and I edited some photos, and I, um, yeah. So there's lots of like, and I'm working on a unit. So it, there's a unit, and there's, there's always a bottle cap painting in, in process. It's like, they take a long time. They need a lot of time to dry. There's lots of steps, and they make a big mess. So there's always some bottle caps I'm working on. Um, I, I was doing some shooting, uh, a video and photography last month, and I will sit on that probably for months before I even look at it. So I don't know if there's any, like there's definitely no routine. And then I take breaks. Then I take like after show and stuff, I won't work for a good month and just, because it's, um, unless, you know, especially when I'm feeling like I'm ending something or, or then I just allow myself to, like, I don't beat myself up. And um, even though there's always something to do and file, you know, you know how that is. Um, but I, I like to take breaks and I like to work. <laughs> so I definitely bounce. I mean, that, I obviously, you know, I'm so all over the place with my practice that I could never just be like, okay, I'm going to make a painting. <laughs> I've never done that in my life. I've never, like, made a piece without working on two or three other pieces at the same time. Yeah. Not that that's the right way to do it, that's just my way. Yeah, yeah. It took, it wasn't, I didn't, I wasn't, you know, when I was in school, I was, um, you know, theory, and I just, you know, read it all, don't remember any of it. <laughs> um, and maybe I shouldn't be saying that. Um, <laughs> um, it's my practice, and your practice is your practice. There is no, it's like good sex. It's just like, what are the rules? Let's do this, 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 you know. You know, some people, you know, let's not get into that. <laughs> but, <laughs> right? I mean, it's, 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 it's ours. I mean, it's mine. This is my practice. This is how I roll. This is how I do it. I don't expect anybody else to do it, you know. So, I, um... You know, when I was uh, in undergrad, I, you know, there was definitely um, pressure with theory and, and, and it made me uncomfortable and it, and, it, and it has taken some time to be so confident. But I've, um, you know, we all have insecurities, but I'm, you know, most confident about this work. So it keeps me going. Yeah. You know, I was I was making these films for two or three years, and and it was about a, about two years. And I and I was I was putting the appliances away because it was after Bolognaism, and I didn't know what to do. And I and I was really kind of just analyzing these these videos and these photographs, and I was questioning myself and like, what am I doing and why am I doing it? But I wanted to go back into the studio and be alone and paint and make objects alone without shooting people and, and editing and, and all that stuff and buying and, you know. So, um, I mean, I felt like I explained it, that I, you know, like this, this kind of lower class craft element idea. How did it come to me? Magic. I mean, I'm an artist. It's amazing. <laughs> it is. It was, a, you know, I don't know. Blessed, like amazing. You know, I'm, I own that bottle cap painting stuff. <laughs> you know, uh, I don't, it was great when it happened, you know. And the very first one or two, you know, I, 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 I put the bottle caps on the wood and then I just, I knew that I wanted it to be really kind of like, just um, really just suggesting some bottle caps. So I filled it up with just paint and they never dried and they shrunk and they had this horrible, so it was this process of kind of figuring out the process. And, um, Anyone else? Well, thank you. Mm -hmm.